everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos where I teach you all about painting miniatures from start to finish and everything in between, including stuff about brushes. And this is part 118, the brush hierarchy. How to get the most out of your brushes as they pretty much, you know, wear and tear the more you use them. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Miniature Painting 101. As always, my name is Jay, and today I'll be doing this voiceover as I'm actually talking. Uh, the reason being is just a little bit easier to go over now than with a voiceover later. And this episode is going to be what I, over what I call the brush hierarchy. Um, it is what I use when I'm, I'm with my brushes. I get a lot of questions uh, about, you know, like you or comments saying that you paint a lot of miniatures, you must throw away a lot of brushes. Or, you know, what do you do with your brushes as they get worn out? And here's an example of just a bunch of my brushes all here. And they're in various stages of use and wear and tear and so, etc. And uh, I'll talk about them today. Basically, I don't throw out many brushes at all. I use my brushes throughout the painting process as many times as I can. And then when they get too bad for one job, I switch them to another job. And that's what this video is going to be about. And as I like to call it, the brush hierarchy. At the top of the brush hierarchy are the brushes in the pristine orders. Like these are the ones that I really like to use and they're basically your detail brushes and your fine detail brushes. Um, they're the ones that need to be in pristine condition at all times. You know, like for example, here's my Windsor Newton 7 series brush. I always keep it clean. I, I use it for special occasions and stuff. My, uh, here is a brush from Games of Gears. It's a size zero. And a couple other ones. Here's just one of my brushes. It's a one, size one. Here's a double zero, double zero. And uh, these are the brushes I, I always keep nice and clean. Now, to be fair, I do clean my brushes thoroughly regardless of what size or type. And that is a way to prevent your brushes from wearing out quickly. And I like to use my brush, and these brushes are, some of these are many years old, and I've used them many, many more times than I can ever count. And that's the first thing. I always recommend cleaning your brushes, keeping them in good, safe condition. You know, don't let them get too wet, or then they'll bend. Uh, store them correctly, and you'll, you'll, they'll last for you a very, very long time. But that begs the question, what happens as these brushes, you know, you use them a lot, the wear and tear happens, and then they start looking like other brushes, like this one, for example. I've used it a lot, many times, more times I can count, probably easily a hundred different miniatures, a uh, hundred different painting tutorials, actually, probably this one brush alone. Um, but uh, probably 300 miniatures, and it starts to look like this. And then you just basically you shift it down the, the hierarchy towards what job it could prefer. For example, this brush used to be all nice and fine, but now it's a bit uh, round, and at the end what you do is I find when it gets a little, uh, when I load it with paint, it tends to separate just a little bit. This is just a great, uh, just a great, you know, basing brush. I love to base my miniatures with this brush because it has a great job. It has a nice large brush size and it's great for basing miniatures of an entire size. When you don't need to care about the fine detail, this is a great brush, the way to go. And this is one of the old Citadel ones, large brush. But I use this as my basing brush now. As you see the detail, it's there. It's still in pretty good shape, but uh, it is, uh, yeah, it's just nice and it's great for base coating. It's not in the best shape, obviously. This brush as well, same thing. You know, as you can see, it just, it's starting to lose its tip a little bit. Now you can use products like our, uh, our, you know, brush cleaner, the master's brush cleaner preserver as well. It helps get you that point back. But if you find you're losing it, again, this brush, as you can see, it sells some great retention on it. The ferrule is not bad at all. And this is a great base coating brush. I love to use it for base coating and it just saves a lot of time when miniature, you know, when base coating miniatures. Then you get into to areas where like there's a, a bit more wear and tear. And that's usually where you want to move things to things like this brush, for example. This one, unfortunately, uh, this is not my doing, but the ferrule is basically shot. It has paint all loaded here, and that's gonna be pretty much the, past the point of no return. So this isn't a really good base coating brush because I find that these, it separates too much when you load it, right? Like this, as you can see the tip here. So this is actually a great uh, dry brush. What I like to do is load paint and then dry brush. And if you keep paint on the very bristles, you can actually get a really good dry brush effect using this particular brush. Dry brushing is kind of the, is to me the second lowest tier in the hierarchy is dry brushing because once you start dry brushing using your brush, you're going to ruin it eventually. Uh, dry brushing takes by far the largest wear and tear out of any uh, any technique on your brush is dry brushing. It really does ruin your tip eventually, and uh, but that's good, okay, because it's it. If you're using it for many, many times, it's okay to move it down the hierarchy to dry brushing. 
uh, as well as you can use it for, you know, this one, for example. This tip, unfortunately, is completely ruined as well because of just a couple effects, you know, and it's, it, the paint is really, really stuck here where the uh, bristles connect to the ferrule. Um, so this one, for example, I will use this one for dry brushing, but I'll also use it for stippling. I can actually use it for stippling, I can use it for dry brushing, and I also use it for whenever I'm using um, chipping effects, heavy chipping effects. I will, like a heavy chipping fluid, I'll use this as the brush that I use to remove the paints when I'm using heavy chipping effects. Something like this. That way I don't ruin my other brushes because you're really just jamming it into the, the miniature and scraping it off, which really ruins the tip of the brush. So when the brush tip is already kind of ruined, you uh, this is a great example of something you can use for these. The, the key is to reuse your brush as many times as you can for various things in the hierarchy, so that way uh, you don't throw away your brush. Less, The more time you get out of a brush and the more use, the better it is. Once again, something like this, this is a great dry brush. It's actually in great shape right now, and uh, I'm going to use this for dry brushing throughout. But after constant dry brushing, uh, you can get into a situation where your dry brush goes from this to something like to something like this. As you can see here, the tip is ruined. It has too much dried up paint. The, the tips are just shot, right? This is a dry brush that's been used again more times than I can count. It's did its job. So then what would be the next step for this particular dry brush? This is actually a brush that I would then move to my basing brush. Um, and my basing brush ends up kind of like this in the end until I get tired of it and I throw it out because of all the layers of PVA glue on it. So after I'm tired of a brush tip, I switch it then to my basing brush. And I'll use this brush then, I'll move it down the hierarchy to the very bottom where it's just basing. Um, a basing brush is something I use to spread the PVA glue on my bases. And uh, again, this is pretty much the end of the line. And after I'm done with the basing brush, then I will throw it out. So this brush will be thrown out eventually, and this is the bottom of the line. But I've used all these brushes as many times as I possibly can, more times as I can count, and that's the key. Other things you can do is um, switch the area in which you use your brush. This brush is a Citadel large brush, as you can see here by the thing. So it used to look like this, but after years of wear and tear on it, it has just a, set, a small set of hairs on it, as you can see here by comparison. So what I've actually done is, this has actually become one of my really fine detail brushes. Um, I use this one actually when painting eyes. I like to just keep the, 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 um, the brush really sharp. And I use this when painting eyes in very small sections because it's just a couple small amounts of hairs. So I'll use this for base coating eyes and small details on it. So it's actually gone from a large brush to a small one. Now once the tip's done, then I'll, I'll definitely probably move it to the gluing, you know, the basing brush. Other thing to do. Uh, this one. Again, little even brushes like this. When you find that the tip is starting to go on them, it becomes a little dry brush. I love brushes like this that have really flat ends at the end because then you can just load them with a little bit and you can do very, very small dry brushes along your miniature if you want. And that's a great thing. Now, as I said, dry brushing will ruin and destroy your brush in the end and then it can go to, to basing afterwards. But yeah, that's it. So there you go. That is the brush hierarchy in a nutshell. As I said, brushes are meant to be used. You can't have your brush and use it too, unfortunately. But you can do things like constantly clean it, you know, dry it off afterwards, keep it in a proper container. That way you don't ruin the brush short term. Obviously never leave paint on your brush. When loading it, don't get let the paint get where the bristles meet the ferrule. But if you end up using your brush to the point where it no longer serves its purpose, don't fret, just move it down the hierarchy to another job. It could be used for, you know, stippling. Like this one I've actually used for stippling, as I said. Dry brushing. It can be used for basing. It could actually go, if you end up destroying all a lot of hairs, it could actually go down the scale to a more of a fine detail brush like this one. All these are, are examples of brushes that you can, uh, or things that you can move around the hierarchy. And the key is to keep the ones at the top are the ones you trust the most. So your, your ones in brand new condition, like this one right here, or your, you know, brand new ones. That way you get, the, these ones are the one you keep the ones at the top of the hierarchy um, with the ones that you need to do the job the best. So they're usually the detail and the fine detail brushes are the ones that are at the top of the hierarchy because you need to keep the blade sharp. And once it loses its sharpness, it really doesn't serve that purpose anymore. And then you move it down to base coating or dry brushing, stippling, etc. And that, my friends, is 
this week's episode on Miniature Painting 101 about the what I like to call the brush hierarchy. And uh, yeah. So as always, thank you so much for watching this episode of Miniature Painting 101. I really hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for next week's episode, part 119, which is just around the corner. But if you don't want to wait for next week, check out The Warp. Click on the link below for a free 14-day trial to my premium YouTube channel. Well, not only will get to see the next six months worth of Miniature Painting 101 episodes before anyone else, you get to see over 100 start-to-finish painting tutorials, battle reports, face-off episodes, a Q&J series, and Airbrush 101 series. Tons of wargaming content that I know you'll love. So go check out The Warp. I think you're going to love it. Stay tuned for more videos. Until next time, this is Jay saying... Happy painting, everyone.